What's up? It's Valencia Cardoso, and I'm here with Tony from Mowgli. Hey, Tony. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Valencia. Good afternoon to you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, so, for the people out there, um, would you be able to explain to us a little bit about what Mowgli does and how they work? Yeah, basically, we are mentoring entrepreneurs. So, what we do is we, we get access to entrepreneurs through our partners. Um, so, for example, in, in Lebanon, our partner is Berrytech. And through them and other parties, we get access to a number of entrepreneurs. Having selected the entrepreneurs we want to mentor, which there's a process behind, we then select mentors who we feel are appropriate. So a typical program will take 10 to 12 entrepreneurs. And with those 10 to 12 entrepreneurs, we will have 10 to 12 mentors selected. And what happens is they go away for three days. The first day and a half, the mentors are by themselves being trained by us and facilitated by us so that when the entrepreneurs join them after one and a half days they then start working together um, and then there's a matchmaking process which takes place and then they agree to work together for a period of a year there after this program where the, the mentor just takes the, the entrepreneur on his journey and at the end of the year they're two free, two free human beings they can continue and so far over 80% have continued beyond the year and what sort of inspired you to, like going back to the start, what sort of inspired you to create Mowgli? I, I've had the pleasure of starting up 14 businesses in the Middle East and four businesses outside the Middle East. And when I looked back over my life, I've had lots and lots of mentors in my life who have helped me at every stage of my development, both, both as a person both within my life, but most importantly within each of the businesses. And I had the opportunity a few years ago to meet a, a great guy called C.K. Pralad, and we talked about what has to happen to really springboard more entrepreneurs into the world, and we came up with the phrase, "What every entrepreneur needs a mentor. So that's what Mowgli is doing at this moment in time. And so how important do you feel like me mentors are in the process of bringing an entrepreneur along? Can I, make, can I make it very specific to the region? Okay. Um, the first building block, which without it, no entrepreneur will succeed, is what I call hope and aspiration. So if the entrepreneur doesn't have any hope or aspiration, he will not have the drive he's going to need to get through all the challenges in his business. And quite often, entrepreneurship is a relatively new concept within the Middle East. And in particular, in certain countries, it's not a, a normal way of life. So the children who are being brought up are typically being brought up in an atmosphere or an environment which says to work in the public sector is the best way to go for your career. And here you're asking them to change that and then move into a private sector where they have all the trials and tribulations of a startup and then continue their business thereafter. So the, it's really important that the mentor inspires that hope and aspiration within the entrepreneur to start with. Secondly, they are a great source of learning. So whoever the entrepreneur is, hopefully their horizons will be expanded by the uh, mentor. There's another critical area, you know, self-esteem and confidence. If you are a startup, it is pretty daunting and to inspire that self-confidence in your own capability and self-esteem is something which every mentor should do with his entrepreneur. And then there's a whole stack of other areas where the mentor focuses on the entrepreneur um, right the way through. I, I have a, written a paper which is called The Three Critical Times That an Entrepreneur Needs a Mentor. The first one is during startup. As he's losing money, he's running out of money, he can't tell his best friend he's going to go bankrupt next week. Who does he talk to? Who does he release all his tensions with? but a mentor. <clears throat> then he maybe has stabilized his business. He's now in positive cash flow, and now he can really grow his business. But quite often, the entrepreneur is actually not the right person to lead the growth of a business, because growing a business needs systems, processes, organizational structure. So who's going to share with the entrepreneur that he needs to bring somebody alongside him and uh, maybe take away a little bit of the shine off the entrepreneur, but a mentor? And the third phase is when the entrepreneur becomes highly successful, 
maybe he's got getting a bit of wealth, his ego becomes inflated, and his arrogance becomes to the fore. If he doesn't have a mentor at that particular time, he has what I call his Tiger Woods moment in life. And we all know what happened there. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good way of putting it, actually. Um, so uh, it must be really important to select the right entrepreneurs and the right mentors. How do you go about selecting your entrepreneurs as well as your mentors? We have a, an idealistic framework which we try and apply. The first case is the businesses must have started for at least six months. So they must have been trading for six months, preferably a year. Um, and we look to take on every program, startup businesses, which are six months, one year, to companies which are in growth, and some companies who may be in a mature stage. So the, the entrepreneurs within each program come from a diversity of stages through the life cycle. Secondly, we're looking for businesses who are for profit, and we're looking for social entrepreneurs. Typically, we would love to have 80% of the program business entrepreneurs, 20% social entrepreneurs. We then look for diversity. So far, I think it's just over 30% women have been on our programs. Um, we're looking for whatever the, the religious diversity is, we're looking for that on the programs within the country. We're looking for wherever we can get more diversity. Um, each entrepreneur is interviewed before they go on the program. Um, and part of that process to make sure that we believe that they are suitable to be mentored. Not all entrepreneurs are suitable to be mentored. Okay. Um, and these entrepreneurs come through our partners. So I mentioned in Lebanon, Veritech. In Jordan, we have the Young Entrepreneurs Association, the Queen Rainia Center for Entrepreneurship, Micro Fund for Women, and then Oasis 500, uh, Maidan. All these, we've had entrepreneurs come to us. So that's how we select the entrepreneurs at the end of the day. And um, you just mentioned a whole bunch of um, places in the Middle East and North Africa region. And I know you guys focus a lot on the Middle East and North Africa region. Uh, is there a specific reason you've chosen to do so? And what countries do you operate in? And who, where are you planning to expand into? We, uh, we started in the Middle East for two prime reasons. The first one is I spent 45 years of my life in the Middle East, so I know it pretty well. Um, but secondly, when we started looking at this whole subject in 2007, it was very c clear and evident to us that the single biggest challenge facing the Middle East going forward was youth unemployment. And when we started that journey in 2007, very few actually understood the repercussions that would happen if they did not find employment for the youth. Of course, that all changed in January this year with Tunisia, then Egypt, etc. when it became very clear to the world that youth unemployment is the biggest single challenge facing the Middle East. So that's why we're doing the Middle East. And where, where we do at the moment is in Lebanon, in Jordan, in Palestine, in Syria. We have our first program in Egypt running in, at the end of November, beginning of December. Um, we hope to do a program actually in Dubai the first quarter next year. And actually a first program in Qatar as well. Um, and we're looking at Tunisia, Morocco, Algeria, and Libya is, is a little bit off the radar screen. But it all depends for us upon our partners. It's partners providing us with entrepreneurs, partners who are willing to be, make us part of their ecosystem, and, and partners who will actually fund us at the end of the day. And um, last but not least, how can people connect with you on different various levels? First of all, go to our website, which is www.mowgli.org.uk. But also, we do Entrepreneurs Jams. We actually did one in Dubai, by the way, on October the 29th, um, out at the Emirates Golf Club, where we had 65 people, about 22 entrepreneurs, and about 10 to 15 mentors um, came together with other people who were interested in this ecosystem. And... Uh, we do present ourselves in a number of occasions around the world. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for doing this with me. And, um